your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. (laughs) (laughs) I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Halloween Eve. Welcome to Mayor in the Morning. Are you guys ready for Halloween? Do you not care about Halloween? Are we dressing up? Are we not dressing up? Last night's Simcast was really fun. I messed up in my Scarlet Witch costume, which I haven't had on in two years, and it was tight. The pants did not want to go on. But the show must go on. So I sat here in tight pants for four hours. Performer, and that's just part of showbiz, ladies and gentlemen. We had a good crew last night. We had Leanne Starr, Mary Morgan, Zia Anderson, Great Experiment, and Nina Infinity, and also Anna. Also, go check coming up this actually tonight. Uh, my Pamela show will feature Kenny Warren, Matt Marin, and Sabrina Piper, all comedians. I haven't had an all in wet spot quite some time so uh, yeah if you're interested in that compoundmedia.com of course you can listen to other great shows like in hot water the anthony kumia show etc on jameson has a show there from that metal show back in the day Uh, i got a couple of gigs to promote for you guys do you guys like my autumnal sweater I bought this last year and I, it was too big for me and it was frumpy and I was going to return it. I had it in a bag to the side and I'm, I'm just chronically really bad at returning things. I process, I hate, I hate everything that's involved with an online return. So I just do it and guess what? Things that are big now. Do I look retarded? My stream is choppy. Uh, well, it's strange because it's showing I have one piece of internet, like one dot of internet, you know, of the whole three stripe thing. I only have the first dot showing, but I'm on the I'm on the plug in internet, like I'm on the good internet. Uh, <laughs> I have shows coming up. Thank you to everybody who came out this past weekend at the brokerage in Belmore. Really awesome shows. It was really cool to hang out with Carrie and George from from high school. I hadn't seen those guys in just a couple years because I'm fresh out of high school. Really, it was really great to see those guys. And uh, it's always interesting to see people you knew from high school and like, and then we were talking about like who's based and then who's still like a brain dead liberal. (laughs) we're going through all the cool kids like my memory is so strange i can rattle off like 25 people from high school no problem right now but if you were going to ask me like other important things i should know in my life uh, i have a hard time remembering those i think what happened is the majority of my memory was used up in high school remembering names teachers names uh high school cheers various choreographies from plays and then there just was no left there was no room left for the rest of my adulthood but it was very fun to go through with Carrie and George, like who got bad. And she was like, not only were these kids cool when we were in school, but their damn kids are cool now. How does that happen? How does generational coolness get passed down? I don't know. I was not a cool kid, but I wasn't a loser either. Let that be clear. Ooh, thank you for the yellow super chat. You know what that means. And it was all- All yellow. 
I don't know. I thought I turned the loop off. Jonathan Prezion. Hi, Chrissy. Long time no see. I've just been working a lot. Good for you. Get it. Get it, girl. Oh, it's an orange super chat. You know what that means. Young Pei Ching. Good to see you, buddy. My only Asian fan. Thanks for the orange boy. Morning, Chrissy. I heard you. Has Babby now. So way to go. I've been too busy to catch the live, so I'm grateful for the clips. It's not November yet, but I am thankful for you and Frank and everyone else never stopping. Oh, that's really sweet. Thanks, Young Pei. Um, I'm I'm liking that people are there. You've sort of bypassed Halloween and now you're in the, the full-blown Thanksgiving spirit. It's good. It's good to be grateful year-round. Hi, Young Pei again. Thank you. Also, I'm loving this character arc vibe. You started as a blonde sweater mom. <laughs> You you started as a blonde sweater mom from Long Island. Okay, I don't know if I like this comment. Uh, look, I was going to return this last year. I had every intention of returning this sweater, but now it is big and shapeless. So it's it's going to be with me now. Also, I missed the return window. It looks good on stream. It's just very shapeless and uh, big. I think if I tuck it in and maybe do a jacket over. Okay, enough about the sweater. You're right. You're right. Anyway, I got more shows coming up. If you are in the Florida area, specifically Tampa, I'll be headlining Size Blurs Comedy Club on Sunday, December 3rd. Then back to San Diego the first weekend of the new year, 2024. Wow, can't believe it. it's almost here. I'll be headlining the Mic Drop Comedy Club January 5th and 6th in San Diego. One show Friday, two shows Saturday. For tickets, go to chrissymayer.com. I will be trying to possibly sneak in a Texas trip uh, before I have to push a human out of my body. <laughs> it's so funny to say that. Oh, gosh, it's another yellow. Wow, thank you, K-Max. Chrissy, what is the neatest gift you've ever received in your mailbox? Give me some good suggestions. I debated getting you a hat, but figured... Does Chrissy wear hats on stream? I maybe for a costume, I would wear a hat on stream. But oh my god, I'm so glad you you brought this up, K Max. Neatest gift, neatest gift. I mean, I've definitely received like kooky, tr fun, trinkety things. Neatest. Okay, this is pretty neat, and it's also right here. Um, it's a cherry. But it's also a toilet brush. And this is too nice for me to actually use on my actual toilet. So, like, how cute is that? I think if I have, like, a cute bathroom in the future. I just don't want it to get all, sh you know, shitty, literally. So that was a pretty cool. That was pretty neat. I have so many things. I've gotten so many interesting things from you guys, which brings me to my next segment. That is the mailbag segment. Woohoo! I should have a mailbag song. I'm going to work on that. Got a couple mailbag things. Um, again, if you want to send me something strange or funny or useful, whatever, my, my P.O. box is scrolling below. A few people have asked me about a, a baby registry I have not put together. Uh, registry for that yet it's a bit overwhelming i know i should because i know a lot of people are going to be looking for that and i probably definitely will need baby stuff but, uh i just it hasn't really hit me yet you know i don't feel like i'm that i'm that pregnant yet i feel like when you have a big belly now then you can be like oh wow I'm like, oh my god Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is so funny. It's a little I got news for you. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's really cute. I have a matching shirt too. I wonder if it's from the same guy. <gasps> okay. Does this have... Who it's from? Who it's from? It does not. Uh, I'm off. Look how blurry it is. Oh my god! It's like I'm in a bunker. What kind of internet is this? 
don't think it's the internet. I think it's your computer. Oh my God. Do you really think it's maybe I can close off some windows here? Let's close off windows. Let's close off the windows. Okay. Oh, I got to get a new computer. I didn't think. How many things do you have open? I do have quite a few things open. Besides the internet, do you have other programs running? Um, gosh, okay. I have a lot of windows. I have some of them are playing videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. I know. I just didn't realize. All right, let me close some tabs. Closing things. Is that better? So far, you gotta do more. I think I had a Discord still on. Close Discord. That's constantly running in the background. Um, well, shit, I don't even know where Discord is. Because I don't see it on my thing. Maybe it is Maybe it, it is closed down. Disc All right, so I closed off a ton of windows. I think that I think that's helping. Goodness. Okay. Well, whoever sent this to me, this is this is adorable. It's a little. I got news for you. That means you're gay. Ah, this is so funny. And uh, I have a matching black tank top, so this is hilarious. Thank you, whoever sent this. Oh my God! Is that the first little baby gift? No, it's the second. Fealty uh gave us a little robot toy okay cool this doesn't say who it's from i have to wash it before i wear it i'll forget to do that oh <gasps> thank you this is really cute <laughs> it's so small i can't believe a person will fit in that wow okay do, do, do. what is this what is this Amazon, Amazon. Oh, a gift for you. One for you and one for the baby. Get some get some nice quality. You gotta open up task manager. Task manager? Do control alt delete. Okay, what am I control alt deleting? There's nothing there. Just control alt delete. Oh right. Um control alt delete. Was this happening last night? Now what do I do? Lock, switch what user. Task manager. Task manager. Okay. Okay. Do you see a lot of apps open? Uh, no. It's really just the Brave browser, the malware. What is your CPU percentage and memory percentage? Uh, 27 CPU, 68 memory. Okay. What is showing you when you scroll down the CPU percentage? What's the, what What's using percentages? Uh, Discord 1.2. Close that. How? End task. End task. Okay. What else are you seeing with CPU? What else is using something? Oh, da, 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 da. Skype. <laughs> yeah, turn end task. End task. When was the last time I Skyped? Window, Windows audio device graph. No. Uh, 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 desktop window manager. That appears to be all. Everything else I'm seeing zero percent. System interrupts. Windows Explorer. Oh, here's what you do. Go to the top. Okay. Look on my screen. See my screen? Yes. Click on memory. Click on memory. And I'll show you the top thing. Top things is Brave browser using right. one thousand two hundred seventy-five. Okay. Microsoft Edge using two ninety-three. Anti-malware service. Executable. You can end that. Access denied. I wish I could have done this. Right, what's after that? Task manager. Oh. <laughs> but those are the top things. Am so I? Then go to CPU and do the same thing. Click it so you see the top. Brave browser. <laughs> Task manager. Windows audio. Service host. Windows camera. Looks like all regular stuff. All right. Uh, at least you close a couple things. Okay. I did it. Oh, dear. The chat is gone. Okay. All right. Back to this. Oh, my God. I got gift cards. This is really sweet. You really did not have to do this. 
um, for Aerie. My God, thank you. Weird, I was just getting ads for them the other day. That's really sweet, Hunter. Thanks, buddy. I still have to send you your t-shirt. <laughs> I am so behind. Also, I forgot to mention this because I didn't realize it was for mailbag day, but this arrived. I don't know who it's from, but it's hilarious. It's boobs of steel. Um, Busty Heroines and the Cult of and the Culture War by J. Ishiro Finney. Part one, decoding the Amazon. A deep dive to find the historical political you act and often look like a poor copy of men. Oh wow. And look, there's pictures. Oh, this is fun and interesting. And this actually looks like something I will read. Oh, wow. Cool. Thank you to who, whoever sent this to me. Like, I love the cover art. Who's a seal? Okay, this is cool. This is up my alley for sure. Thank you to whoever sent that. It's almost like something I would have read as like a women's studies minor. Things are wonky again. Well, I don't know what to do, people. <laughs> I maybe knew, maybe uh, Fealty is definitely right. A new computer is in my future, but maybe sooner than later because uh, he's been telling me forever that this is not a streaming computer. And I just bought it because it was aesthetically pleasing. Oh my goodness. What is this and who is it from? <gasps> who is this from? I don't know. Oh my God, it's socks. I love socks. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Dang, I was really wanting some new socks, too. These are awesome. These are very, like, I'm, I'm going to put these on and pretend I'm in a wooden cabin, sipping cocoa, overlooking a ski resort. Ooh, they're vacuum sealed. Just like if I were to sell my panties on the internet. Uh, okay. <gasps> Look how nice. Oh my God, they're so soft. Thank you to whoever sent me these. It's just like many pairs of these sort of classic. Now I am turning into just a sweater mom. <laughs> these look like someone knit them with love. And then it says something that I don't understand on the bottom. What is this? Norwegian for sock? Tutu. That's all I can, or maybe it's not even. Okay, I need a, I need a sock translator. <gasps> but these are so great, thank you. They're all a little different. I'm really excited for these because these are perfect to wear with like boots, shoes. Well, maybe not boots because I have been falling in boots a little bit too much lately. Like just sort of tripping and falling. Hey, I'm in the corner. Yeah, but now you look sharp. Why am I in the corner? Sharp now. Nobody puts me in the corner. Wow, thank you for the socks. I don't know who these are from. But I'm really, really stoked for that. I'm stoked for the socks. I don't know what this is. I kind of want to put the socks on right now. Does anyone speak sock? God. Ah! The notes are crumpled. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's more socks. A sock moment from Hunter. Thank you, Hunter. You're like a mind reader because I was really, really wanting some like seasonal socks. <gasps> These are all Thanksgiving socks. Yes. I'm having a sock moment. I'm so excited for Thanksgiving socks. Oh, these are so awesome. These are so awesome. Look, turkey socks. Oh, this is great. Now I can throw out all my socks that are lifeless. Oh, look at that. Look, turkeys. Oh, wow. I'm going to be so sick.
Oh my god, I want to put all the socks on my whole body. Yes, Davina, you're right. If your feet are cold, your whole body is cold. I hate being cold. Look, it's chicken bones. <laughs> Maybe these are turkey legs. Sock of the day. Sock of the day. Guess what, guys? There's more socks. Holy, holy cow. Yep, these are all Thanksgiving. Except for this one, I can definitely wear today and tomorrow because they got pumpkins on them. Jack o' lanterns. You got to wear socks. Yeah! I'm going to leave these to the side. Because I am wearing spooky, um, spooky green socks. Like, what are those ghosts? Because I, I just, I didn't have Thanksgiving socks. And it was really, it was making me kind of anxious. I was not feeling ready for the Thanksgiving season. Oh, look at this. Pumpkins and coffees. Like, these are, I think, pumpkins. Are these PSLs on the socks? I think they are. Very, I'll say it again, autumnal. That's the word of the day. Oh, they're individually wrapped. Look at this. Leaves. Oh, my God. This is great. These socks won't leave me alone. Oh, my God. You guys, there's more. We got turkeys on them. Yes. Oh! I'm going to have to practice my turkey noises. This is great. These are great. This one has mushrooms on. These are great. I guess if you take or into psychedelics, which I'm not. I think my my psychedelic days are behind me. I did it a couple times. I'm good. I feel like you only need to do it like I don't know, once or twice, and then I got shit to do. These are great. These are so great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm having a sad moment. I'm so sad now. Is it bad that I get excited by socks? Frank also likes socks. But he likes the functional ones. I just like the fun ones. I'm really, I'm into seasonal socks. Welcome to Delicious Dish. Oh, thank you for the yellow... Mark Zart, thanks for the super chat. Good morning, Chrissy Frank. Muffin and Waffles. Congratulations on the baby. So happy for you. You and Frank will be great parents. And Muffin and Waffles will be great. All their siblings. Oh, my God. Thank you. I wonder if they'll just, like, I wonder if waff Waffles will just, like, try to scratch them and pull them and stuff. Deranged Lunatic, sounds like Frank gave you the best gift in your box. Oh, he did. <laughs> Thanks, Derange. What's up? Good morning, push ups. Thanks for the super chat. Okay, we have some sock chats going on in the, in the chat here. Okay, okay. Wow, so much has happened. So much has happened, particularly uh, with my girl Gina Carano. Do I want to start with that, or want to start with my, start with my fu funny messages from a fan slash. Who knows? Stalker. Who knows where this person is at mentally, emotionally. I'll let you guys be the judge. So um, Frank has, he'll send me sometimes funny messages from like my Facebook fan account or, or whatever, because I just end up not seeing a lot of them. And this one was pretty funny. I thought you guys should see it. So this, this starts, I think this summer, I think this is from this August. Uh, Chris starts by saying hi. And then uh, how many days later? I don't respond to him. So August 27th, I'm going to just really walk everyone through his whole mental process. So August 27th, that's Sunday. He says hi. And then a, a week later, the following Monday, he says, bitch. 
And then he gives that a month. Exactly one month later, he goes, sorry for calling you a bitch. Then two days later, uh, something, her butts get me some brez foos. I have no idea what this means. This is like, this even looks like spam. This is very ignorable. This is a clip from my 600 pound life. It takes a lot of effort to get this woman out of her bed. I don't know the context for him sending me this. I don't, I don't see the connection here. But it doesn't end there, boys and girls. Oh, no. Oh, no, it does not. It does not end there. It continues. Um, <laughs> again, he says, sorry. Hi, sorry for calling you. Oh, goodness. Uh, sorry, my shit is all messed up right now. I don't know if the screens are being finicky, if it's the touch screen or what's happening here. Um, um, uh, maybe I'm touching it too much. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, boy. All right, I wonder, if did you guys even see the other one? All right, so he says, hi, sorry for calling you a bitch. Do you think I'm a simp? A few days later, he says, just wondering if we can talk or do I have to block you or delete my account too? See, I don't, I don't understand the reasoning on this. Like if we can't talk, then he has to delete his account. It, don't pretend to have that kind of power. <laughs> what, why? Why would that be the solution? No, please don't block or delete your account. Uh, and then the same day, just maybe two hours later, later I think you're a asshole. I think he was trying to call me an asshole there. One day later at, at midnight. No, no, that's five hours later. Oh, five hours later, he went from calling me an, an asshole to later that evening. Look, I'm sorry. I'm not too sure if you're messing with me or being serious. That's why I'm joking with you. I love how zero response <laughs> could make I think that I am messing with him. He's having a whole conversation himself this is all happening in his head he's assuming <laughs> my motives my emotions my point of view he wants to know if i am messing with him or if i am being serious that is why he is joking with me he says i've been hurt before and i don't know how to navigate stuff and am sensitive to rejection <laughs> If you want to take the stuff down on my wall, let me know. Oh, if you want me to take the stuff down on my wall, let me know. If not, if it's not a joke. Again, what the hell are you talking about, sir? I don't know what's on your... And I just read this today, and this is days later. I don't know what's on your wall. I don't care what's on your wall. I don't know about your past hurt. I don't care about your past hurt. I don't understand why you're messaging me. I don't know what you want. How can I just... I read this whole thing. I go, how can I help you? What? <sighs> but he's been hurt before and he doesn't know how to navigate stuff. He's sensitive to rejection. So he, I guess, is now setting himself up for rejection. Like if someone doesn't write you back, they are either not interested or never saw your message. Uh, could there be other options? Those are the main two. If you want me to take the stuff down on my wall, let me know. If not, if it's not a joke. So now it's like, I think he's sort of assuming if I'm seeing this in real time, he's tempting me. He's baiting me to like get more involved with him. Like you need to look at my wall and see if what I posted is okay with you. Don't give me work to do. I'm, I have enough of my own shit to deal with, <laughs> especially right now. Ah. I'm not too sure if you'll reply. <laughs> Where was that message months ago? I'm not too sure if you'll reply, but I want to say you're beautiful. Okay, so we've come full circle. Whew. We went on the whole roller coaster of emotions with this guy. Really everything. Chris, the Kiwi, um, best of luck to you. I, I don't think you should delete or block your account. I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what you need. <laughs> but I hope you get well soon. Possum, Possum Billy. Reading Cridge DMs was a regular segment on early SimCast. I miss it. You know, you're right. 
And we should bring that back. You're a hundred percent right. Oh, my candle died. Time for a new one. You're totally right. And and we should do more of that because I do have a lot. David though, what's up? Thanks for the green boy. DP. Be careful, Chrissy. Next thing you know, he might be driving 15 hours to marry you wearing a weird hat. Yeah, wearing a wet straw hat. <laughs> Putting a Ireland books on my on the hood of my car. Oh my God. And this the thing is you want to be sympathetic and kind to to people. Poor Kiwi guy. Yes, Metastep. I just uh a whole conversation happened without my knowledge. Let, let him know that blocking is the only way. Yes, actually, CMDR cello. Do you actually play the cello? Episode 100 is next Sunday, and there are special guests planned. I don't know if I should tease them out or not, but they are special, and some of them have never been on the show before. Who would you guys like to see on Simcast next week for, for Simcast 100? And like, yeah, what do you guys think we should do? What do you think we should talk about? Oh, look at that. Frank put up. Frank did a teaser. He did a teaser for one of the guests. You tease. People are going to think AOC is coming on. Yes, you know what? It's been a while since we have had Carrie Smith. Let's get Carrie Smith on. Let's get her on the horn. Hi, Matthew Hammond. Thanks for the super chat. Where is the apple with the googly eyes? We need to know the current fruit size of Frank Jr. according to your app. Okay, it's first of all, it's filing cabinet. It's Jr. That is the name. And God, you, you really want me to run out and get a different type of fruit every week? Would that make you happy, Matthew? Will that... <laughs> Yes, he's an apple now, but but it'll be an avocado on Friday. So I need to get googly eyes, and I guess I could manage getting a a different piece of fruit every week, especially if it's something that I'll end up eating. Yeah, I'm looking through these fruits. These are all things that I eat. So, all right, if you guys think I should do the fruit idea... Put put a Y in the chat. If you think the fruit idea is stupid, put an N in the chat. If you want to see fruit of the week. You, I think you just like googly eyes, Matthew Hammond. Hunter. Oh, thank you for the socks, Hunter. Did you get the bookshelf in the P.O. box a few weeks ago? Yes. <laughs> was that from you? Oh, my God. I was so surprised. I was so shocked to get that because... uh. You know, when you go to your P.O. box, the thing is only like this big, right? Like this by this. It's base sized, really. Maybe smaller. And if it's if the, the thing doesn't fit in the P.O. box, you get a yellow slip. And then you have to go to the counter. You have to say who you are. Say your box number. And then they go and get the box. And I was so shocked when this woman brought out this gigantic, had to drag it on the floor, so heavy i needed help getting into my car and then i needed a stranger to help me put the seats down in my car so that i could fit it in because i was like this thing's not gonna fit in my car i was gonna have to like phone a friend like call for help and i was like i don't even have rope with which to tie this to the hook to the roof of the car but the kindness of strangers prevailed and they were able to get my seats down and i drove the thing home and it's this very cool bookshelf so thank you hunter I have to find a place to put it. It's but it's really cool. I was what a surprise and thank you so much. I'll have to take a picture of it uh at some point and post it. David Lowe. Oh, I already said that. <laughs> the weird hat. Oh my gosh. Push push up says get Gina Carano. I'm working on it. She's a busy gal. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of whys for the fruit idea. I'm seeing mostly whys. Okay. All right. If you guys want to see the fruit. Wow. You're so proud of yourself, Matthew. You really want, you want your fruit. <coughs> uh, 
you hate going to the counter with the card. The line is always forever. You know, I actually really love going to the post office. It makes me feel like it's another decade. I feel like when I'm at the post office, like it doesn't necessarily feel like 2023. I feel like it could be the 90s still and things are okay. Because <laughs> it's just like one of these nice kind of neighborhoody tasks. And it's like, a, it's a fun little errand. Because even if there's nothing in the in the P.O. box, it's like, all right, <laughs> you got to see the people. You know, you see the ladies who work behind the counter. I think I should uh, give them little Christmas treats, right? That's somebody you put on your, like, list of, like, a Christmas card list. Oh, yeah, Christmas cards. Now is kind of the time that people take their Christmas card. I've never done, I've never done like a Christmas card photo thing. You know, when people get them printed from whatever, like a Vista print or something. And it's like, here's us doing our autumnal family portrait or like <laughs> everyone slap on a flannel and get in a tree. We're taking our Christmas card photo. Special guest, BLs, you know, maybe we shouldn't tease these guests out, Frank. Maybe we should just let people salivate. These are special guests for next Sunday's 100th episode of Simcast. We got to get Keanu, Keanu Thompson on. Maybe Keanu, a Lila, a Carrie Smith. And yes, BLM, why are you gay? Gina Carana has been on quite a tear lately. She's been on quite a tweet brigade, breaking her silence on her feelings about Disney and other things. She's just been, uh, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying the, the Gina Carano tweets of late. Let me bring a couple up because I don't know if these are even in order. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, this is it. This is one. Let me share it with you. I just watched the the latest South Park special Into the Pandaverse. Have you guys seen it? It's very funny. They really go hard on Kathleen Kennedy. It's almost like these people have been watching like a or a or a yellow flash or uh geeks and gamers. It's really kind of amazing. Um so Gina Carano tweets out couple days ago this is the part where kathleen kennedy demands any youtubers get censored off of youtube for sharing and laughing at this hilarious episode she'll have youtube disable the thumbs the thumbs down option because of the ratio she'll receive and then she'll have her publicist ghouls make sure variety and hollywood reporter run hit pieces about the south park creators and their families smearing their names through every useful idiot she has under her thumb who would sell their soul to work for Lucasfilm. She'll activate her online mob to repeat that the South Park creators are racist, bigot, transphobes, and demand the South Park creators publicly apologize by only using words she approves of. And finally, she'll demand they subject themselves to a re-education course of 45 people in the LGBTQ community Zoom call to sit there and listen of how badly they got their feelings hurt all over a little boop of a South Park episode. But maybe, just maybe, the jig is up. You know, the first time I read this, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of us were thinking the same thing. But now that I read this the second time, it seems pretty obvious that this, hey, and this is just a theory. I cannot, I don't know. I'm sure she can't really talk about exactly what went down and how with Disney when she um, lost her gig on the Mandalorian. But to me, this looks like exactly what they would have wanted from her. She would be in the best position to know what kind of demands Disney makes on a person who, who commits the crime of uh, wrong think and wrong speak. So when you look at just how much goes into uh, attacking someone, an actor who has the wrong opinions, just like Gina did. Uh, the hit pieces, all the people that work for her, all the people who want to help her out, the useful idiots, uh, the online mob, the re-education course. It's like, 
if they were expecting Gina to do all this, holy shit. <laughs> of course she didn't apologize. She did nothing wrong. There was nothing for Gina to apologize for in the first place. But this is just a fire tweet from Gina Carano. And it'll be interesting to see if Disney or Kathleen Kennedy makes any kind of response to this South Park special. How could you not? How could she not have seen this? How could not everyone at Disney have seen this by now? Or at least seen the clips. The clips are unavoidable. They're everywhere. Star Wars Theory with a salute. Aw. Milady. Damn it. I freaking love you, Gina, from D-Day Cobra. Nerdy Home. Disney has made their bed and deserve every single bit of criticism that's thrown their way. Austin Peterson. Damn, Gina, you're even more fierce outside the ring than you were in. Chris Novas says, go woke, go broke. People are finally waking up and we will all have the last laugh. I stand with Gina Carano. <laughs> Nina Infinity with a mic drop from Token. A yes from Yellow Flash. Drunk 3PO <laughs> with a fatality. Jif. Gif? Jif? It's Jif. Eric K. Redhead Libertarian. Mindy Robinson. I feel like once they tried to make Snow White and the Seven Dwarves without someone who was Snow White and without any dwarves, they were dead in the water. I hope she knows how to flip burgers. I'm sure Kathleen Kennedy... If she does lose her position, she'll just be promoted upwards and just still working for Disney, but out of the limelight, out of her current position. Wowie, though. I didn't really know what GIF to put. I just really liked this one of Chris Christie. Barely fitting into his pants. I love that Mike Pence dropped out of the race before Chris Christie because he is much funnier. He's fun to talk about on stage. So, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Big props to Gina. Balls of steel. I enjoy the hot takes. And she had another one recently. So this one I want to give a little bit of a back, <clears throat> a backstory on. This is from Around the Galaxy, which I had never heard of. He is a, at ATG cast. He is the number one Star Wars talk show, feed spot, top five film interview podcast. Wikipedia. Okay, so he looks like a Disney simp to me. He just looks like someone who has the right opinions and probably wouldn't really criticize Disney much. So he takes Gina's tweet that I just said and uh, screenshots and says, in case you were wondering, Gina Carano has lost her goddamn mind. Woo, really lost her mind on something she's lived through? Like she actually is in, she's one of the few people in a position to talk about what goes on inside Disney and uh, what the consequences are for wrong speak. So Gina responds to this guy. And this is a lot. This is a doozy. Do you always call a woman crazy just because she has more firsthand experience than you and says something you don't like or understand? Bit misogynistic, don't you think? Tisk tisk. Curious if your overlords pay you or do y'all just go ahead and shove your whole head straight up their ass for free? I'm guessing for free might want to come out for some fresh air for some added context, not just for you, but for the people reading. One of the things your overlords asked me to do was to unfollow certain accounts because they said bad things about Kathleen Kennedy, which confirms exactly what I just said. That was a huge red flag for me. Wow. I, I would love to be a fly on the wall and find out what exact accounts they wanted her to unfollow. If I were the head of one of the most powerful entertainment companies in the world, I would know that haters come with the territory and that maybe the haters are expressing their thoughts because they actually care and caring is a good thing because as long as they care, well, hey, we still have something to work with. Maybe we can win their hearts back eventually and maybe they do have some good things to add to the conversation, which they do and did. And at the very least, they are still buying the product. Look at Mando season one. Boom. The healing had begun. People were so excited for the Mandalorian season one. I still have my Gina Carano action figure back there. I still have multiple baby Yodas. If you are a proper good leader, you learn how to embrace and communicate, not dictate and silence and demand your actors and directors unfollow and shame more than half of your fan base and the people who have stuck with the franchise for decades. 
Side note, don't say the force is female and then only allow the men to express their political views online. In fact, just drop the ridiculous uh, phrase completely. One of the problems your overlords are having now is that they've made a lot of people completely stop caring about one of the most beloved franchises in history, all by bullying, pushing aggressive agendas, and trying to silence the people criticizing them. This is all true. How are they able to tell stories they don't understand when the ones they identify with are the empire? They are literally trying to squash the little guys, the rebellion. No wonder the storytelling is struggling. Right. It's almost like art, imita art imitating life because m remember Occupy Wall Street. Remember when people were fighting against like the machine and corporatism and corporate greed. And now the woke, the left and, and corporations seems to have merged together. Because they have. They fired and dehumanized people like me who did absolutely nothing wrong. All to virtue signal to people like you, the yes men. But yes, men, unfortunately for you and them, do not drive culture. Maybe they were banking on the kids picking up the slack. But one of the best things about this franchise is passing it from generation to generation to share. The competition is too high to throw out something as valuable as that. Why would one generation pass it on when you've disrespected and thrown them away? Your overlords tried to hide behind the two opposing fan bases fighting each uh, fighting each other instead of taking responsibility, which is what the South Park special uh, perfectly shows. So they encourage the hate, all while virtue signaling that they are standing up for minorities, but instead using them as a shield and a weapon. Funny enough, just how our government works. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover between our government, the arts, culture, society, all that. They think people will forget, and yes, maybe they will, but for this moment, they have heard the people's voice, and it shook them. They're choosing to stick uh, with their weak leadership who couldn't handle YouTubers saying mean things online, when all it would have taken is a true leader to step in, take the reins, take some responsibility, stop discriminating, apologize about the things that have been done wrong, step completely out of politics, and be truly inclusive, and they would be back in business. Until then, they're stuck with you, the yes men, and they're plummeting stock. I feel like every single paragraph of this tweet is a mic drop. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm right on all fronts, but I'm open-hearted and refuse to discriminate based off of powerful people telling me how to think and act and if there was something I needed to apologize for, I would have in a heartbeat. But I didn't say or do anything wrong. And I love that she is still firm in this. That they didn't bully her and get her to apologize something she didn't truly believe she did wrong. Which I think happens a lot in Hollywood. You're just like, they get you scared and anxious and nervous. And that your representation will drop you and you end up apologizing for things. You didn't mean or didn't intend just to save face and keep your job. It's a lot of people have no scruples and integrity. Gina Carano is one of the few people who has integrity in this business. People come up to me daily to shake my hand and thank me for taking a stand. Even people who think differently. One thing is true. Good leadership makes for a better world leading to healthier and happier people and better opportunity. Look around. We are watching the devastating effects of what bad leadership can do worldwide. Woo. Go, Gina, go. Uh, and then Drunk 3PO adds, Pete attacks anyone and everyone who doesn't agree with him. The Star Wars YouTubers, whom he thinks are his friends, laugh at him behind his back. It's pathetic. He does this to try and gain traction for a failed podcast. He also has small, he has a small PB, and he's proud about it. Maybe I should have just booped him. That was a novel. Felt good, though. Sunday Therapy K, moving on. No, good for you, Gina. I feel like you said relatively little about about this whole thing. And she was fired, what, two years ago? How long ago was that? It's been a two. He said two. It's just been a while, and we haven't heard much from her on this. To be honest, your boobs get you in more trouble. I enjoy the boobs. Yeah, Gina, you've held back for so long. I'm glad you're opening up and letting it all hang out. Love to see it. We do. Gina's speaking facts. 
more salutes. Years ago, I made this freak apologize for directly targeting women that were associated with geeks and gamers. He sent private apologies only to start going after them all over again a few weeks later. Never trust a male feminist. Never. Oh, is that what this guy is? Ugh. Power K. Greg, your overlords tried to hide behind the two opposing fan bases fighting each other instead of taking responsibility, so they encouraged the hate, all while virtue signaling that they are standing up for minorities, but instead using them as a shield and a weapon. This right here, to a T, coffin meat nail. I love you, Gina. A lot of support. A lot of support for Ms. Carano. Gina was the best thing about Star Wars. I agree. Thanks for the amazing words from X-Ray Girl. Core Black Garrett says, testify. Dan Bass says, this weirdo has his rectum still in flames for what South Park did to him and his kind. That cope is the dying cry of a failed cultural movement that just realized it became the butt of the joke. Very well said, Dan Vask. Yeah, like you guys are starting to not be uh, the cool kids anymore. You're beginning to feel like you're not on the inside of everything. We love you, Gina. Sure, the force is female, but only if you are the right kind of female. Exactly. Gay Republican. Oh, I've met him said uh, Gina Carano is absolutely right. I remember a time when I was incredibly excited about new Star Wars content. I remember a time when I watched every Marvel movie in theaters and watched every Mandalorian episode the day it came out. Cara Dune was an instant favorite. Those days have long since passed when Disney fired Gina Carano for asking us to learn from history and love our neighbors, even those of different differing political views. I cut out all Disney cold turkey. Since they wrongfully fired Gina, I have only seen one Disney movie in theaters. I used to see all of them. They didn't just fire her. They sent a message of exactly where they stand as a company. If they would fire Gina for her views, then they would certainly fire me if I was an employee of theirs. That begs the question, why would I give my money to a company that hates my values so much they would fire me? I value freedom, self-expression, love, and small-town American values. Disney has made it clear again and again that those are not their values. They are about freedom to... Uh, they are about freedom to agree with them, expressing yourself, so long as your expression is repeating their expression. Love, but not for us dirty Republicans. They definitely don't value the small town Americans whose money built their company. Now they scratch their heads as their stock falls. They ask themselves why their new movies crash and burn at the box office. They wonder why they are bleeding Disney Plus subscribers. They can't grasp why park attendance is down. The answer to all these questions is the same. Disney got involved in politics and chose the wrong side. They sided against parents in their feud with Florida. They sided against small town values by firing Gina. They insert uh, inappropriate themes into kids' movies, and that's putting it lightly. If you dare to complain about any of this, you are just a right-wing troll, and they delight in your rage. What they didn't realize is the customers they were uh, they were dating are small in number, and the customers they were alienating are great in number. We used to love Disney. Now we have checked out. I'm not mad if they ruin Star Wars because I no longer care. I'm not mad if they ruin Marvel because I no longer care. I used to be a huge Disney fan that forked over God only knows how much money. Now they get nothing from me. It isn't enough for Disney to, quote, quiet the noise on the culture war. They, knew a, they need to apologize to Gina and to their center and right-leaning customers and fix all of this stuff they broke. In the meantime, Disney can enjoy going broke. Wow, really, really well said. From gay, the gay Republican. Woohoo! Interesting times. Interesting times. It only took how many failures? How many fumbles? For them to start uh, smelling the waking up and smelling the coffee. Gina didn't just flame this guy and Disney. She also pointed out how inept our presidential administration is as well. Oh, yeah, and she put it very mildly. Um, surprised that Chrissy isn't covering the hockey player that killed the other hockey player last night. I did see that clip. I think if I were to show that, that would give me um, like a graphic violence strike. Oh, I learned. I learned my lesson from the playing the clip of people throwing sauce at each other. So I, I think some a video of somebody taking a a hockey skate to the neck probably wouldn't do so well. But yeah, there's this clip going around Twitter and people are 
kind of squabbling over whether it was an accident or intentional. Ah, it looks pretty intentional to me there. I've watched a lot of hockey games. Like your foot just doesn't kick up like that randomly. Although I'll have to ask uh, my hockey friend, Matt, what he thinks of that. Yes. Rest in peace, Matthew Perry. Oh, but you can't ask cause of death. You can't, you can't ask if he's vaccinated. It's too soon for that. Yet, yet they wanted to know if we were vaccinated to buy groceries, go to the movies, go to restaurants, get on planes. That was all fine. Uh, but if someone who was like obsessed with the vax, pro vax, wearing a shirt promoting the vax, if that person dies suddenly, well, gosh, no, that's just overstepping. That's over the line to ask maybe if if that was a vax related injury. Okay, that's how it works. I see. He drowned in a hot tub while on drugs. Well, I heard there were no drugs at the scene or in his system. And it was like at four in the afternoon. So, but I guess that's why they don't want people with heart problems going in hot tubs. And I think if you've gotten the thing, odds are you probably have a heart problem. But what do I know? I'm not a doctor. Do, 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 do. Okay. I want to talk about this TMZ article. Let me find it. Someone who is not ever in the news is in the news. And I think it's funny. I don't talk about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Kevin Brennan is a, is a, is, or was, or dabbles used to do it more, but not so much lately, uh, as a stand-up comic, Kevin Brennan, he is the brother of much more famous and successful Neil Brennan. And he, he got himself into TMZ over a tweet, which like Kevin Brennan doesn't have a lot of Twitter followers. This tweet did not go viral by any means. Uh, so I think it's funny that TMZ wrote this article about him because Kevin Brennan's not really a public figure, not a well-known one anyway, and, and the tweet itself didn't really go viral. But uh, this is still interesting anyway. Ex-SNL writer mocks Perry death. Ha ha ha. Kevin Brennan, a former SNL writer and comedian, is making light of Matthew Perry's passing in a real ugly way, which may speak to why he isn't more successful in showbiz. So, like, out the gate, they're taking, they're taking shots at him. Kevin, who had a two-year stint writing for the famed sketch comedy show way back when, and who was once a rising comic, took to Twitter this weekend after news of Perry's death broke and posted an incredibly insensitive message mocking the late Friends actor. So here's his tweet here. Uh, all in caps, drowned in a hot tub. Ha ha ha. Friends star Matthew Perry dead at 54 after apparent drowning. So this is like that particularly got a hundred likes. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's got a couple more now, but this is not a viral tweet by any means. So I just I, I wonder why TMZ wrote this. I wonder who at TMZ maybe has an axe to grind for Kevin Brennan. Um, like certainly, and he, and he's not the first person to do untoward tweets after somebody dies. Usually Ari Shafir is often the first person to say something uncouth after a celebrity dies. He wrote drowned in a hot tub. Ha ha ha. Thinking this, uh, this while linking back to our story, the tweet wasn't viewed by many people. KB only has about 5,900 followers or so anyway. But it certainly left a bad taste in the mouths of folks who did see it, with many people calling him out in the comments and bashing him for making a joke out of it. Here's his brother, Neil. While Kevin isn't nearly as relevant as he was in the early 90s uh, and early 2000s, he still has a famous connection to mainstream Hollywood through his younger brother, Neil Brennan, from whom he's estranged. Neil, of course, is the co-writer and creator of The Chappelle Show. Neil and Kevin had a falling out years ago, and the younger sibling went on to forge a solid path for himself. Neil's written for tons of shows and even has his own Netflix comedy special now, whereas Kevin hosts a pretty obscure podcast and does gigs here and there. It bears repeating, Neil is not close to Kevin. And based on the interviews Neil Brennan has done of late, as of late, where he was asked about his relationship with Kevin, you can tell it's a sensitive topic. Based on this reaction to Perry alone, you'll see their personalities are very different. So, of course, 
Kevin's crude remarks here are in no way a reflection of Neil, who, as far as we can tell, minds his business and focuses on his work and who doesn't seem to have talked about Perry or friends for that matter. Very much all that publicly. You know what I think this is? I think this is someone running cover for Neil Brennan. I think this is someone who's trying to do d damage control for Neil Brennan. That's what this is starting to sound like for me. Because they really go into a lot of detail about Neil. And they kind of don't need to. Because if this is an article about a comic with a bad take. Or a spicy tweet. Or a, oh it's too soon to make a joke about that. There would be no need to bring Neil in to this degree. But they really are. So I, I wonder if somebody on the TMZ staff knows Neil. And they're just trying to separate the two. So that Neil doesn't get any uh, backlash from this. They're trying to protect Neil. So Neil minds his own business and focuses on his work. He doesn't seem to have talked about Perry or friends for that matter very much at all publicly. <laughs> Kevin appears to still fancy himself stand up adjacent, regularly commenting on mainstream comedians that Neil undoubtedly rubs shoulders with, although what he pulled here is far from a laughing matter. Neil doesn't seem to have reacted to his brother's post. We've reached out to him for comment. Nonetheless, so far, no word back. Oh, boy. And it doesn't say who at TMZ wrote this article. I wonder. I wonder who has it out for him. Kind of interesting, right? TMZ blow blows anyway. Hi, Muffin. Want to come here and jump? and jump oh anyway is tmz really the ethical one didn't they stake out matthew's house and filmed his parents arriving after the death oh gosh did they really yeah maybe they're just trying to fluff up their matthew perry section for news uh they're not typically uh, an outlet i go to a lot just to, to get news generally yeah, if you look at their page, how much Matthew Perry content they have. Yeah, maybe just because it has something to do with Matthew Perry. That's why they wanted to bring Kevin in. Uh, look at all these articles. Matthew Perry never been happier before sudden death. Matthew Perry used pickleball to help with his battle against drug abuse. Oh, and they've got a Spanish version too. Charlie Puth pays tribute to Matthew Perry, plays Friends theme song, and, and See You Again. Hank Azaria reminisces about Matthew Perry, says he brought him to AA. Matthew Perry's cause of death, still a mystery. Such a mystery. Matthew Perry's family addresses his death and, death and vans in his new statement. Does no illicit drugs, but prescriptions found. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, these are all the articles. A lot of Matthew Perry stuff. Oh, there's more? Yeah. All right, and then they've got Spanish versions of everything. Matthew Perry's last scene in public with a, was a meal with a friend, plus his eerie last post. What was his eerie last post? Oh, he did not look good. Oof. Wow, poor guy. That's his hot tub? Oh, this is the eerie post. Just six days ago in what would be his final Instagram post, he posted a nighttime shot from the hot tub included in the caption, Oh, so warm water swirling around makes you feel good. I'm Matt Man. Ooh, it looks like a nice hot tub. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, a lot of people really liked him. I was not a big fan of his uh, role, his Chandler role on Friends, but a lot of people liked it. But he said, Betty, but he said, um, 
I just don't think. And a good point to to bring up about TMZ is like you can't police free speech at the end of the day. Like it would have made more sense for TMZ to do an article about here are all the comedians or public figures who had bad takes on Matthew Perry's death or here's what not to say after a celebrity dies or after a public figure dies. And I could have understood more so Kevin's tweet in a context of, of other folks like comedians or celebrities who had tone deaf takes on the death. Right. But like you, you're not, you're not going to shame somebody, certainly not somebody like Kevin Brennan. You're not going to shame him into deleting the tweet or apologizing or ch changing what he says. It's as uh, some people may have found it funny, just like some people find the things I tweet and say on stage offensive, but some people find it funny and they should be uh, allowed to say that. They should be allowed to say what they want. I cannot show you muffin because I am not allowed to pick up someone who is 35 pounds, which is muffin. They have stupid rules about picking things up. Why do they involve the brother in the first place? TMZ are parasites and cocksuckers. I wouldn't disagree with that. Don't do drugs. Friends was garbage. I don't understand the big deal with friends. All the people I know who really love friends, like, just don't admit. Don't admit to people if you really like to show friends. That's my advice. Chandler was better than, yeah, only slightly. Chandler was only slightly better than Ross because Ross was completely insufferable and like the biggest simp. There was supposedly a tweet saying he had a copy of Obama's chef's book that he was going to release. What? TMZ has the freedom to be horrible and I have the freedom to denounce him. Exactly. Everyone can all say what they feel. Did the doctor, did you ask the doctor what happens if you pick up something heavy? I guess they don't want you to hurt your back or something. I don't understand it, really. Joey was, Joey was my favorite, too. <laughs> don't trust anyone who liked the show, friends. They'll try to turn your life into a sitcom. That ain't all that funny. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Oh, Tiff. Hi, Tiff. Hi, Chrissy. I finally published my second book to get today. I love your streams and congratulations on your marriage and baby. Tiff, this is so great. Um, if you tweet about, uh, let's see, tweet about it, maybe tag me. I'll, I'll retweet it or I'll look for your Twitter and I'll try to do a retweet. But congrats. That's very cool. It's a big deal even to publish one book. I was not a Seinfeld fan when the show first came out. I always thought of it as just a show my sister liked and uh like same thing about dave matthews band like eh, okay that's that's something my sister likes that's not really my thing i didn't understand or appreciate seinfeld when it first came out but now as an adult i've lived more life i've worked more jobs i've lived in new york city longer worked in new york city i do appreciate seinfeld and i i really uh enjoy the writing is so sharp it's so funny the jokes are so sharply written and there's such a there's not a lot of extra words everything's very everything's very tight it's a tight script so i appreciate it more now for sure i i was not look i'm not saying i was a dave matthews fan or even am but it was something i completely ruled out you know what i mean like this is a normal thing to do. You completely rule things out because your siblings like it. Uh, but Kramer is for sure my favorite character on Seinfeld. By a lot. Kramer's the funniest person on the show. Just an absolute genius of physical comedy. It's like, can I talk about the ski thing, the hockey thing without showing the clip? No, my producer is saying no. <laughs> uh, okay. George, you liked George. Oh, I'm getting thirsty. Um, I think I already showed the Gina thing. Oh. Oh, this. We were talking about this a little bit on SimCast last night. This is something that always sparks a lot of debate. 
especially this time of year. Is this um is, is this old or new? Oh. Is it are there old lemons in there? That might be an old one. It's lemony. Yeah. I think there's old lemons in there. Chris. You can't drink water with old lemons sitting in there. If lemons have been sitting in the water for a couple days, it's it gets a little sour. I'm not high maintenance for saying this. I think you get 24 hours on lemon water, but if it go, gets older than that, it sits around. It, the lemons start to fall apart, decompose, make it icky. Most popular candies by U.S. State 20. Oh, wow, this is by state. This is difficult. I thought this was going to be a candy ranking thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's coconut water. My favorite. This is when you can't drink Chulis 24 7. Okay, okay. Wow. All right. I, uh, I might need your help, guys. There's a lot of states where I have no idea where they at, what, the, what their tastes are. I only get four minutes for this. I'm going to fail miserably. Let's give it a go. Enter popular candy. Snickers. Oh, it just puts it on the state. It's like that, huh? Candy corn, Skittles, Starburst, um, bit o Honey. <laughs> Why am I saying that? No one likes bit o Honey. Butterfinger. No one likes Butterfinger. Keith. Wow. Nerds. What? Nerds rope. What? Um, um, um. Milky Way. Um, Three Musketeers. Um, um, um. Almond Joy. Mounds. Hershey. Uh, Baby Ruth. What? Oh, Reese's, of course. How could I forget? Reese's Pieces. What? Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, Twizzlers. Spelling it wrong? No. Um, licorice. No. Uh, Sour Patch. Twizzlers. Oh. I did that. Um, lemon heads? I don't fucking know. Wow. Okay. Zoom in on, Zooming in. All right. All right. All right. I need ideas. Um, jelly beans. I can't believe candy corn is not anywhere. The fuck? Oh, I did it. I did it. Okay. Um, 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 um. Red vines. Um, 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 okay, I need to go to the chat. Hershey kisses. Hershey. Hershey kisses. Hershey's. Um, um, uh, okay, I'm looking at the chat. So I did I did Starburst in the baby Ruth. Watch McCall. It's Kit Kat. Thank you. Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Nobody. Doing a Kit Kat? What the hell? Uh, York. York. Swedish fish. Thank you. Helpful. York. Peppermint. Patty. No. Swedish fish. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Okay. Whoppers. <laughs> Ike and Ike. Nope. Gosh darn it. Potato chips. Get out of here. Keith. M&M's. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. M&M. Oh, of course. Uh, hot balls. Sour Patch Kids. I think I did Sour Patch. I'll try it again, though. No, that already is up there. Um, peanut Chew. No. Okay, what else? What else? What else? What else? Ring Pops, Starburst, Now and Laters. Now and Laters. Affy? Laffy Taffy? <laughs> what are their... Um... Shoot. Uh, mounds? I did that already. Oh my god. I'm running out of time, y'all. 
Milk duds, thank you. Malt balls. Help, help, help. Fruit, fruit dots. Pixie sticks. No one likes that. Poppers, good balls. Good balls. Ah! Twix! I forgot about Twix! <sighs> Twix, that's unforgivable. And Jolly Ranchers, that, that was dumb. I really... Oh, Lifesavers. Blow Pops. I forgot about the Popsicle industry entirely. Like, the Lollipop. I forgot about Dum Dums. I love Dum Dums. Hot Tamales, I never... That never would have occurred to me. Double Bubble. That's stupid. Tootsie Pops. Like, that's not even... Maybe up here they just don't have access to good candy in these sort of northern states because t these are terrible. T how old are all these candies? Like this is like first round, first draft candies. Tootsie Pops, double bubble gum, hot tamales. And then up in here, like the East Coast is like, yeah, this is where it's at. These are all the classics. I'm surprised. Yeah, Texas. I had Texas more of a maybe a Sour Patch. What is New York like? Sour Patch. That makes sense. M&M's classic. Snickers, Sour Patch. Oh, I love Sour Patch. Candy Corn. Skittles for Florida. Lemonheads for, uh, what is this? Mississippi. Snickers. Reese's Cups. So they do cups, not pieces. Milky Way, candy corn, Snickers, Hershey's Kiss is boring, but it's Nevada. They don't know any better. Candy corn for Idaho. Double bubble gum for what is this, Montana up here? Okay, the rest of these are fine. Wow, Hawaii likes Skittles and Alaska likes Twix. I'm surprised that there's not more Twix. Because Twix is like a standard issue, classic Halloween candy. It's Twix. It's Reese's. It's like it's Snickers or Milky Way, depending on your preference for that sort of thing. Definitely M&M's is a classic. Definitely Starburst. Skittles less so, but I understand. And like, I love Almond Joy. I love Mounds. I love anything with coconut, but I understand that that is not most people's preference. And it seems weird to me that someone would go lollipop over like something gooey, chewy. Like a Starburst or a Skittle. Woohoo, Florida. Yes, that's Kiki's favorite is Skittles. Kiki likes the purple Skittles. Any upsets? Like, are you? Uh, do you guys live in any of these states where the candy is really like you're upset with what they picked? And who who votes on this thing? I don't remember being polled for my favorite candy in New York State. Oh yes, here I am having coconut water. You're right. Kit Kat is also classic. Kit Kat is great in ice cream, great in other things. Like you could eat a buck ton of Kit Kats and not really gross yourself out the way like the way you can if you eat a lot of Snickers or like a lot of the other stuff. Kit Kats are really on the light side. Okay, now I really want candy. I bought a bunch of candy to bring over to Compound Media later. And, uh, well, I'm looking at it. Filthy! I never got a notification from YouTube for the stream. I was working on the Simcast clips. Definitely not getting clips done before Wet Spot. I guess I could stay at home at work. Come to Wet Spot, Filthy. Come. I'll give you a bag of candy. It'll be fun. I put the topics in from what we talked about. On Simcast in the description. I don't know if that helps at all. Yes, candy. What what candies do you guys like? Because guess what? After tomorrow, I'm probably not going to talk about candy anymore. 
Okay. Let's see. Do we have any more spooky Halloween movies to do? No, I think Young Frankenstein was the last one. I think November. What were we saying in November to go back to Star Wars movies? Yeah, you got to do the prequels. The prequels. Horror movies from A to Z. Okay, I'm not going to be good at this. I can tell you right now. Oh, I have to, I have to name what all of these are. Oh, boy. Can you oh. Zoom in on it? So Sorry, Dion. It's me. It's not you. Can I zoom in on this? Yes, please. What do you think? What do you think this is? <sighs> okay. Do I spend time looking at this or do I just go? One, two, and three. I took that from you, Kiki. Show the corn. Hey, how come it's not working? Uh-oh. Did I do it wrong? You have to go in order? Maybe. Or if you click which one. Okay, I don't know this one. But the doll? Dolls? <laughs> Beetlejuice. It doesn't oh. have to be in order. Okay. That's definitely down here, isn't it? Am I wrong? The hills have eyes. Uh, Harry. Uh, 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 zombie thing. Um. Oh God, this one, Poltergeist. Oh, that's down here. Um, um, scream. Two. One. Three. Uh. Oh, what's this one? The creepy one. There. Witch Project. Blair White Project. Scream. Uh. Oh, what's the one where she bangs the knees in with a hammer? It? It's not the it clown over there. Um, Friday the 13th. Um, um, the other stabby guy. Oh, that's interview. The vampire. That's a good one. That's one of my favorite favorites. What are these? What are these? What's the one with the blood in the elevator? Red rum. God damn it. Stephen King. Oh my God. I'm really blanking here. Uh, uh, werewolf? No. I don't know, guys. Help. I'm going to the chat for help. Don't go to the chat. Shooter. Okay. It's shining. Uh, oh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Is this psycho, maybe? Oh, gosh. What is this? Not psycho isn't one of these? This is bad. Chucky? Oh, gosh. This, I know this one. Help. Michael Myers. Help, Michael Bolton. This is Halloween. Duh. This is Freddy Krueger. Nightmare on Elm Street. What, is that not a thing? This is not Freddy Krueger, is it not? What's this woman in the green? This is not Blair Witch Project. Who is this kid? Stranger Things? <sighs> See a Stranger Things reject? This looks like fucking Children of the Corn. What else is there blonde kids in that, have, that are creepy? The perfectly coiffed hair. What is this? Is this... Is the man from Star Wars? Is this that... <sighs> Special where it was like, um, 
Chewy, right? Is this Chewy from Star Wars? No, it's black and white. What the hell is this? Oh, Agent Mulder and Scully. What the hell was that? <laughs> Fuck. X Files. That's not even a movie. It's a show. What's this one? Um, um, horror movie, horror something. I, I think I saw it. Oh no, what's this? Is this Game of Thrones? This looks like someone from Game of Thrones. He's got a beard. This is what, Alita? This looks like something that fucking Anna would dress up as. Alita Battle Angel? Terminator? God damn it. One, two, three. Oh, what is the doll? Megan? That was a good movie. These guys were all at a mall. Zombie land. Yeah. Oh, what's this? What's this guy? There's no nightmare on Elm Street thing. What is this lady? I should really know this. It's not poltergeist. What the fuck is this? The sh not the shining. She was possessed by a demon. They were like, I need an old priest and a young priest. She was like, and they were like, we can't fix her. We all had a teenage phase. I have no idea what this is. Um. Oh my God. I did even worse on this one. What the hell? I only know this because I saw this like couple days ago <gasps> okay annabelle i would have never came up with this dawn of the dead okay i should have known that the exorcist of course the grudge i would have never came up with that jeepers creepers would have never come up with that killer clowns from outer space nope lost boys no idea misery okay the omen never heard of it quarantine she just had a picture of all of us from 2020 rosemary's baby i've never seen it the thing never seen it underworld never seen it Village of the Damned, never seen it. Wolfman, never seen it. See, this isn't really my fault. I haven't seen a lot of these. I have seen The Exorcist. And he looks familiar. But you know what? I don't feel bad about the other ones. I guess I just haven't seen a lot. Animals with jack-o'-lanterns. Halloween images. Who would be so dumb to not know the images? I guess we're going to find out. Okay, wow. Well, let me refer to the chat. A lot of you are judging me. A lot. Oh my God, you need to watch some movies. Some of these are great. Jeepers Creepers was based on an unsolved mystery. I watched unsolved mysteries religiously as a kid. I would watch them in the basement by myself, get scared, and then run upstairs and go to bed. Okay. The Omen is good, you say. I have the killer clowns from outer space on my Funko Pop wall. I've never heard of the Omen. Village of the Damned. Stumped you too. Jeepers Creepers. Okay. Yeah, I thought, of, yes, the ring is what I was thinking of. Oh, I also really want to watch Interview with, the, Interview with the Vampire again. This is going to be one to help me feel better about myself because this looks extremely easy. These are just Halloween images. <laughs> this is something, I guess, if you have dementia and you have to show this to your grandfather, be like, do you know what this is? A grr, candy corn. Uh, apples, <laughs> cats, <laughs> um, oh my God. They just asked me about this. I literally just forgot. <laughs> Holy shit. It's not poltergeist. Oh my God. Something's wrong with me. Focus, focus, ghost, moon, harvest moon, it clown. Jack O' Lantern. What the hell is this? Oh my god. Scream. 
<gasps> a Kit Kat! We were just talking about him. Lightning? Wait, is it go? Wait, these go by letter? These, they're literally giving you the letter with the thing. I'm over here like an asshole just trying to use my memory. The omen. P. I don't know what the hell that is. Pixie dust? I have no idea what that is. R. Um, uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Scream. What is T? Trick or treating? <laughs> uh, this is sad. Undead. The vampire. This is bad. If I don't. Witch. I know that. X. X. Files. <gasps> Young Frankenstein. We just did that. Z. Zombie. Well, then what the fuck is N? Nightmare on Elm Street. E. Exorcist. <gasps> Okay, wow. What's D then? Dawn of the Dead. Help. It's not D. D for Vendetta. F. What the heck is F? Oh my god. <sighs> What's wrong with me? Friday the 13th? What the hell could F be? What is it? What? What is it? Oh, it's a full moon! I don't know what D is. Not know Dead, dirt, 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 douchebags. You're not going to know it. Not going to know it. No. How would I not know it? Because you don't see movies. I see the movies you show me. You never watch this movie. <sighs> Deadpool? Dead on arrival? I'll give you the first word. Okay. Donnie. Donnie Darko? Yeah, I've heard of that. Look at that. L, lightning. I still didn't get lightning. 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 <laughs> What's P? Penis dust. P pixie. I already did pixie sticks. It's dust. P Pop rocks. Yeah, I win. I won Halloween. I did it. I did it, guys. Wow. It took me way too long to realize that the letters were in front of the things. Why didn't you show her this one filing cabinet? Yeah. Why not filing cabinet? I sent you another. Another one? Halloween images? Halloween treats quiz? Can you pick the candy that answers each question? Is this going to be harder? No, it's supposed to be easier. Which candy is not made of crunchy peanut butter wafers covered in chocolate? <sighs> this one. Which candy does not contain toffee? This one does. This one does. Now and later. Which candy is not made from chocolate? Ah, uh, fuck. A zag nut? Which which is not a bubblegum brand? Uh, bubble Bobble. Which is not a coconut candy? Milky Way. You're welcome. Which candy does not contain wafers? Mounds. Which candy does not contain caramel? Neckos. Which candy does not contain crisped rice? Mentos. Which candy is not fruit flavored? Zero. Which candy is not normally associated with directly with a particular holiday? Ooh, Pop Rocks. Which candy does not have a hard candy shell? Sugar babies? Jordan almonds do. Good and plenty. Uh, sugar babies? Which candy does not have the type of nougat? Uh, crackle. Which candy does not contain a marshmallow? Cup of gold. I haven't even heard of that. <sighs> but that doesn't have a marshmallow. Wow. Did I crush it? Yeah, that's scary. I got 100% right? Yeah, I used to eat a lot of candy. Wow. And also, we were playing Jackbox TV yesterday, and I absolutely crushed the memory test, which very much impressed Frank. If you guys have ever played Jackbox TV, there is a game on there called, like, Murder 
something. Um, like there's qu quibbage and there's qu no quiplash and fibbage. But there's in the murder one, there's one where they have different squares and the squares are different colors and different weapons. And I memorized the order of the colors perfectly. So I have an amazing memory for <laughs> colors and candy. But other things, well, you know. Why do we trick or treat on Halloween? Fun size candy facts. Ooh, flick or treat. That sounds like masturbating. Fun size candy facts. What kind of facts? This is a quiz as well. Well, I'm on a roll. Why not? Oh, God. During World War II, this candy was added to soldiers' rations because of its durability. Oh, I know this. Okay, I think it was um, either Jolly Ranchers or um, Lifesavers. Uh, I think I think it was Jolly Ranchers. Oh, I was wrong. Three tons of candy were served up during Ronald Reagan's 1981 inauguration. I would guess M&M's. Wrong again. This candy was named for the former Hershey employee who invented the candy in the 1920s. What? Neko? Wrong again. This candy's name was chosen to suggest a hospitable Western company. Charleston Chew? Oh, wrong again. This candy was named for the men who launched it in Forrest Morris Sr. and Bruce Murray. Uh, Mars Bar? Oh my God, I don't know. Three Musketeers are wrong again. This candy's name came from German word for peppermint. Pfeffermins. I should know this. I should know this. Uh, what's pepperminty on here? Oh no. Pez? On average, licking a licking machine designed by engineering students at Purdue needed 364 licks to get the center of this candy Tootsie Roll pop. When introduced in the 1930s, this candy consisted of separate chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry pieces. Oh, fruit stripe gum. Until the 1930s, this candy was called Papa Sucker. Sugar Daddy. This name of candy comes from a type of malt and milkshake popular in the 1920s. Malt balls? Which is some malt balls here? Oh, Charleston Chew. Nope. This candy takes its name from popular early 20th century dance. Tootsie Roll. The combination of candy and Cheerios and spread Lucky Charms? Marshmallows? Something with marshmallows? Marshmallow, 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 marshmallow. That? No, it might have been the Circus Peanuts. Invented in 19 1899, this game is a hybrid of dental and hygiene. Dentine. The name is mascots. Zebra candy is Yipes. Yipes stripes. Fruit stripe gum. Laid out to the end, the amount of candy that Brock sells in a year would wrap around the Circus Peanuts. The candy was banned in North Dakota. Oh, what would be banned in North Dakota? Candy cigarettes? In the 1930s, Admiral Byrd bought 2.5 tons of candy to the South Pole for the men for two years' stay. Again, candy that's going to last. Uh, Jolly Rancher. Ah! I must know. I must know the answers. Okay, Three Musketeers had separate pieces. That's interesting. Candy cigarettes were banned. Oh, wow. They sell so much candy corn it could wrap around the earth 4.25 times. The, oh, the dance was a Charleston Chew. Circus Penis. Penis. Circus Peanuts and Cheerios and Spiled Lucky Charms. You hear that, Fealty? Uh, that's obvious. Oh, they serve jelly, be uh, jelly beans at Reagan's inauguration. Jolly Rancher, that makes sense. I'm an M's. Duh, Mars and Murray. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Multi milkshake, Milky Way, cool. Necco wafers. Yeah, those also last a long time. Reese's Pieces. Oh, there was someone named Reese's. Okay, that makes sense. That's cool. Sugar Daddy. Okay, the Tootsie Rolls lasted a long time in the war. That's cool. I feel like I learned something. 
Sometimes you don't, candies. Halloween treats. What's this one? What is not? I already did this one. I already did this one. I already did this one. Look again. You clicked the wrong one. I clicked the wrong one. Check the DM. Gah. Ooh, monsters. I'm not going to know this. He did the mesh. Oops. Monster sorting gallery. Can I sort the monsters? Eight vampire movies. Uh... Dracula. Um, shit. Injury of the vampire. Oh boy. Uh, Nosferatu. Um, 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 um. Shaun of the Dead. No. Sons of the Lambs. The vampire. No. Um, gosh, 28 days later. Um, I think I'm wrong on a lot of these. No, green means you're right. Oh, body snatchers. No, no. howling the fly. No, Constantine. No, you don't want to get them wrong. I don't want to get them wrong. Oh, look, it, it changed now. Seven ghosts and spirit movies. <sighs> ghosts and spirits. That one? No. No. Ghostbusters. Poltergeist is a ghost movie. Shaun of the Dead? Signs? No. I haven't seen World War Z. Ghosts and spirits. Ghosts and spirits. That one? No. Alien movies. That one? That one? No. Aliens. Aliens. Signs. Body snatchers. Near dark? No. Independence Day is alien. Demon and devils. Rosemary's baby. So I've heard. Uh, Sounds of Lambs? No. No. Yes. Gojira. The Fly? No. Zombie movies. Shaun of the Dead. Uh, Night of the Living Dead. Lost Boys? No. I haven't seen it. What do I know? The Howling? No. Huh. God. Werewolf movies. <laughs> Dirt. Uh... The fly? No. Werewolf, werewolf. I don't know. Howling? Two mutated creature movies. Gojira. The, the fly. Supernatural mo movie with a human monster. A human monster. This one? Okay. Did okay. Okay, these other ones I haven't seen. I saw 28 Days Later. The rest I have not seen. Pretty good. I did pretty good on that. Do -do -do -do. Clearly, I need to watch some movies now. I've never seen a cat before. What does a cat look like? <laughs> uh... Young Frankenstein. Nightbreed! Thanks for the super chat. You should watch some killer baby horror films. The Suckling, Night Feeder, Plutonium Baby, It's Alive, 1 through 3, The Kindred. Sure, thank you. Wow. I'm sure that'd be, that'd be great for my nightmares. James Shart, you never watched Lost Boys? Watch it. What is it about? Is it good? It seems like one of these um, 90s movies that I just missed. Mark Zart, you need to watch Underworld and The Thing. Great movies. Okay. We'll have a lot of movies to watch. I have a lot of work to do. Circus. I keep seeing Circus pen Penis. 
Okay, I did the monsters. Oh my god, I would be bad at that. Why do we trick or treat? I've always wondered that actually. Why do we trick or treat? If you're asking this, you may be a parent or a babysitter who has to take out an eager child on Halloween night. Or you maybe really just hate when people come to your door asking for stuff. Honestly, you're probably a broke college student in need of some food. And you want to know about the origins of trick-or-treating to see if it's weird for an adult to wear a costume and ring doorbells. Is it? I did that a couple years ago. Regardless, if you're reading this post, you have in some way observed the tradition of trick-or-treating. Don't you think it's a little strange that we knock on doors to get small candy bits that are about to go on clearance the next day? No. It's a pagan holiday. Most would point to the Celtic tradition of Samhain, which you can read more about there. Samhain, oh, pronounced Samhain or Samhain, is a Gaelic word that roughly translates to summer's end. It's marked and symbolized at face value, the end of a harvest and the darkening of the year as fall kicked into full swing. Though spiritually, um, Samhain has held a lot of significance as well. The holiday marked a period where spirits could interact with the material world. Because these spirits were malevolent, cattle would be sacrificed, and observation of Samhain was often mandatory. Divine punishment was a general consensus if one did not observe it. Observers of Samhain would also light fires and make offerings to fairies and other spirits to keep from being kidnapped. Other malevolent beings include the Dullahan, often depicted as headless horsemen. As time went on, the Middle Ages would see turnips getting made into jack-o'-lanterns, and with later, they would do it with pumpkins. That's cool. Christianity has a rather interesting relationship with pagan traditions. Namely, Christianity is known for swallowing pagan traditions and spinning them into Christian ones. November 2 would be designated All Souls Day and included ce uh, celebrations bore resemblance to the ones observed during Samhain. All Souls Day originated as a com uh, com commemoration for the dead as well as a way to show solidarity for souls in purgatory. Pastries called soul cakes would be shared with the poor, which is believed to grant spirits in purgatory respite. This would later evolve into going out and collecting, sharing soul cakes, a.k.a. going souling. We don't know about you, but that sounds like something the Grim Reaper does when they decide to go on a walk. You could take that to constitute the, tr the treat half of trick-or-treat. What about the tricking? While children in England would collect soul cakes, Scotland and Ireland saw guising, which, if you like words, would imply dress up, which is exactly what it is. See, soul souling originated as a way for the poor to pray for the dead relatives of the rich in, ex in exchange for food. Wow. Guising used performance instead of prayer from songs, poetry, or comedy. In essence, guising would see the advent of tricking for treats. Also something prostitutes do. Yes, yeah, we aren't really sure why why we don't say trick or trick for treat nowadays either. Well, I think because it sounds like prostitution. Uh, America would get its first taste of trick or treating with guising in 1911, and despite what the post may have accidentally implemented implied, trick or treating wasn't a term really used outside of North America until the 1940s. Europe wouldn't see the term until the 1980s. Once America got his hands on that sweet candy capital, trick-or-treating gained traction quickly. Granted, the tradition would stumble from 1942 to 1947 when sugar was rationed as a result of World War III. Oops. Two. <laughs> World War III is now. Oh, boy. That's fun. Tr tricks provide treats for Johns. Yes, they are tricking for treats. Would you guys prefer a trick or a treat? It depends on the treat, I think. Don Corio, One Too Many was horrific. Is that a movie? I have to be. What else is new? That's cool. What other Halloween things can we learn about? Do 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 do. Candy wrappers close up. <gasps> this I like. Mm hmm. Okay. We do this one. After today, the candy, the candy content will come to a close. Can you name the popular candies from the close ups of their wrappers? Oh, 
I'm going to smoke this. Are you ready? Skittles. I'll even go in order. M&M. Twizzlers. Yeah. Uh, Haribo. Um, Tootsie Roll. Starburst. Cadbury. Cadbury. Cream egg. Cadbury. Cream egg. Swedish Fish. Sour Patch Kids. Mr. Good Bar. Uh, Toblerone. Uh, ooh, is that Pop Rocks? Hot Tamale is my favorite. Uh, 100 Grand. Airheads. Uh, Heath Bar. Whoppers. Mike and Ike. Lifesavers. And nerds. Boom! In your face. That was so easy. Like, they could have even zoomed in even more. And I would have still smoked it. I could go over some nerds right now. Double letter logos. Sunday crossword. Halloween. This was a this was a really easy one though. We need me and Kiana have, need to have a candy off. I'm down for that. Three minutes to spare. <laughs> uh, European candy? You mean gay candy? No, we don't have time for that. Okay. Wow, what a day. Very exciting. Everyone tune in to What's Bot later tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on compoundmedia.com. Tonight we will have on the show comedians Kenny Warren, Matt Marin, and Sabrina Piper. Tune in when's Oh, and wish Anna, that Star Wars girl, a happy birthday on Tuesday. Remember to do that. Wednesday, I will be interviewing Tracy Beans on the channel here at 12 noon Eastern. Then, of course, Friday Night Tights on Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern on Nerd Rodics channel. And other things in the works I will update you on. Woohoo! You guys are the best. Thank you, Hunter, for all of the socks. Look at this. I'm in sock heaven. I'm in. Look at this. Look at this. Ah! Thank you for the socks. Uh, so another special guest. Nobody knows what that is. Nobody knows who that is. Yes, turn in for Simpcast. Tune in this Sunday, November 5th. We have special guests. All types. It's going to be appointment television. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. And love you.